वेलकम यू ऑल इन द ई कंटेंट ऑफ पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट क्लासेस एम एस एजोलॉजी पेपर फर्स्ट द नेम ऑफ द पेपर इज कंपेरेटिव एनाटॉमी ऑफ वर्टिब्रेट्स एंड टूडे आई विल बी डीलिंग विद द टॉपिक डेवलपमेंट स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ इंटेग्यूमेंट एंड इट्स डेरिवेटिव दैट इज ग्लाइंस स्केल्स फेदर्स एंड हेयर्स For better understanding of this topic, I have divided this topic into following points. First would be introduction. Second would be development of integument. Third would be basic structure of mammalian skin. Fourth would be comparison, com comparing skin of fishes with that of mammals. Fifth would be comparing skin of amphibian with that of mammal. Next, comparing skin of reptiles with that of mammal. comparing skin of birds with mammal into game integumentary derivatives that is epidermal and derma and last one would be functions of integument so let's start this topic as you know vertebrates have evolved in number of ways and so is their integument in different taxa the integument consists primarily of skin and its derivatives integument is an outermost covering of an organism continuous with the lining of the body openings and also covers the appendages the integument restrict the body of the organism separating it from the environment and protect it from foreign matter the vertebrate integument performs many functions but the three primary functions are first to provide mechanical protection second sensing the environment third regulating the exchange of material and energy so in all the groups major classes of the vertebrates skin performs various functions for example scales protect fish from predators and parasite due and reduces the friction with the water multiple overlapping scales provide a flexible covering that allow fish to move easily while swimming in case of amphibians the skin is exceptional among tetrapods in having skin derivatives because they perform cutaneous respiration and that is why they don't have any skin derivative reptilian skin is covered with scutes or scales which along with many other characteristics distinguish reptiles from animals of other classes birds have a thin delicate skin compared to other vertebrates their skin produces a specialized structure called feathers which is one of the unique characteristic feature of the birds an important distinguishing distinguishing characters of mammalian is their hair they also possesses many other horny derivatives of epidermis including nails claws hooves quills horns so now come to the embryonic development of skin as you know the skin has got two basic structure ectoderm making ectoderm and mesoderm ectoderm produces epidermis and mesoderm produces dermis so if you see this diagram you can find in the embryonic development of 4 to 5 weeks there would be a single layer of ectoderm and mesenchyme would be there but if you see the development up to 10th week you will find many layers of ectoderm and below that young connective tissue would be there so when a baby is born it has got a well developed skin with horny layer of stratum corneum 
below which a granular layer stratum germinativum below which a spinous layer and then there would be a germinative layer of dermis so in this way a uh, embryonic development of skin takes place from ectoderm and mesoderm let's move to the next slide and now we can understand the basic structure of mammalian skin that is human skin and this is consist of this skin is consist of basic two parts that is epidermis and dermis here you can see the epidermis can further be divided into five or four layers basic four layers the basic layer in which the cell division mitotic cell division takes place is stratum germinativum the cells rapidly divide in this layer they get nourishment from the dermis and the daughter cells pushed up and they form uh, another layer that is called as stratum granulosum as the name suggests the cytoplasm of stratum granulosum layer is somewhat somewhat dried and the cells pushed again uh, above this stratum germinativum and granulosum and they form stratum lucidium the stratum lucidium is is a very thick layer in pads in foot and the uppermost layer is called as stratum corneum so the epidermis consists of these four layers is termed germinativum then is termed granulosum then is termed lucidium and then is termed corneum below the epidermis would be dermis layer and dermis layer is quite thick it consists of basically two parts a part which is called as the part of the dermis just beneath the epidermis is called as stratum spongiosum which is having a loose connective tissue and the part just beneath stratum spongiosum is stratum compactum compactum which contains many adipose tissues and adhered connective tissues so this is the basic structure of human skin you may be knowing that you know humans are having uh, hair as their main characteristic feature along with the hair there would be uh, some glands are also there uh, uh, along with the hair follicle you will see uh, oil gland and another gland would be there which is called as sebaceous gland uh, sweat gland so this is about the human skin now we will compare the other skins before that let's see the structure of epidermis of human skin uh, uh, this diagram especially shows how the cells are transformed starting from stratum germinativum and converting into flat cells into stratum corneum so the corneum cells are very compressed very flat cells they are dead cells having keratin in them and the the lowest part of the epidermis is called as stratum germinativum and they are somewhat cuboidal and sometimes columnar cells so the cells get nourishment from the dermis they they take the nourishment they divide very rapidly they produces daughter cells and daughter cells are pushed away on the upper side and they are formed they are converted into granulosum then lucidium and then corneum so this is about the skin of the uh, mammals now we will see the skin of the fish the diagrams are shown here the two diagrams shows uh, first is the vs skin of uh, scolyodon and in the lower diagram you can see various type of scales of fish so the fish have a smooth flexible skin dotted with various kinds of glands 
both unicellular and multicellular. Mucus secreting glands are abundant on the skin. Many of the fish, they may have some poison gland which occur in the skin of many cartilaginous fishes and some bony fishes. And they are associated with spines on the fins, tails and around the gills. Although the cartilaginous fishes like sharks have a very tough skin, scattered over it are denticles, each with a pulp cavity around the edge of which is a layer of odontoblast. These cells secrete a dentine or calcareous material of the scale. Outside the dentine is enamel secreted by the overlapping ectoderm. When the denticles pierce through the ectoderm, no more enamel can be added. So, the scales in the fishes are dermal in origin and they remain attached throughout the life of the fishes. And that is why we can determine the age of the fish by looking at the lines of growth in the scales. Now we'll come to the skin of amphibian and then we'll compare it with that of the mammals. So the skin of the frog consists of basic two layers. The upper one is epidermis and lower is lower one is dermis. Most modern amphibians lack horny scales or other derivatives. An exception to this case is Sicilians, which are primitive amphibians and a small group that has fish-like scales similar to those possessed by ancient extinct forms. The amphibian epidermis has five to seven layers of cells formed from a basal stratum germinativum. On the outer side of the skin, the cells are keratinized to form stratum corneum, which is best developed in amphibians that spend most of their time on land. The cells of this horny layer are not continuously shed, but are periodically molted in sheets. The wartness of toads results from local thickening. So, this is the case of the amphibians. You will find a very thin epidermis and below that a thick dermis would be there. The dermis get nourishment from blood vessels and lymph sinuses. They, get, they, they provide the food, oxygen and in this way the stratum germinate, germinativum divides. As you must be knowing, the amphibian skin is highly vascularized. The dermis is highly vascularized because they perform cutaneous respiration. In this way, there would be no derivatives of the skin in amphibians like hairs, feathers, scales, but only poison and mucus glands may be there. If you have remembered, toads contain parotid gland which is a poisonous gland. Now we'll come to a skin of reptiles. As you know, reptiles are characterized by dry skin, dry and scaly skin. So, they contain scales which are ectodermal in origin. You have also seen the scales in fish but they are dermal in origin. Here in reptiles you will find scales which are ectodermal in origin and below this epidermis the dermis would be there which contains many connective tissues and muscle fibers. So regularly the dry epidermis is sloughed off. Ecdysis takes place 
shedding takes place and you will find snakes and many reptiles shedding their skin regularly so skin shows basic two layers epidermis and dermis in reptiles a well developed stratum corneum below which chromatophores are present these are the cells which are which contains colors and through these cells only many calodes and or garden lizards can change their color a single layer stratum germinatum would be there but usually they don't have any type of mucus or poison gland the only gland present on the femur of some lizard is femoral gland so this is the only gland found in the lizard or reptiles so that is all about the reptiles now we'll come to the skin of birds the skin of the bird consists of basic two layer, layer epidermis and inner dermis the dermis is thin delicate and clothed with the feathers feather is the characteristic feature of birds so there would be several types of feathers covering the body the dermis is thin consists of connective tissue and muscle fibers skin lacks sweat and other sebaceous like glands so there would be no cutaneous gland but a oil gland may be there in case of birds on the tail this is this is the only one gland they may be having all the birds are having as compared to other animals so this is all about uh, birds and now we'll come to the integumentary derivatives if we have understand the two layers basic layers of uh, skin that is epidermis and dermis now we'll see their derivatives which uh, parts are derived from epidermis which parts are derived from dermis let's see them so let's first see the epidermal derivatives you must be knowing right now that epidermal dermis is derived from ectoderm of the embryonic layer now we'll see the epidermal derivatives so the structures derived from epidermis are called as epidermal derivatives so many things are derived from epidermis glands are there epidermal scales are there digital tips are there horns horny teeth beaks feathers hair all things these things are derived from epidermis and the and you can see the beautiful picture where the feather is there snake scales are there let's move to the mucus gland that is the first derivative we are discussing of epidermis so these glands are present in stratum germinativum they are derived from stratum germinativum and because the stratum germinativum derived from ectoderm germ layer that is why they are ectodermal in origin so many kinds of mucus glands are there usually cyclostomes and fish they they have unicellular uh, mucus glands but the amphibian may be having multicellular mucus glands so these are the types of mucus glands you can see with the diagram uh, simple tubular may be there simple coil tubular may be there simple alveolar compound tubular compound alveolar compound tubular alveolar in the picture you can see the violet color where these gland cells violet color gland cells produces the secretions and through duct these secretions come out on the skin surface so these are the different kinds of the glands now we will see the second uh, epidermal derivative glands of different types that is poison gland femoral gland urophageal gland sebaceous gland sweat gland or sudoriferous gland scent gland meibomian gland mammary glands perineal gland and photophores poison glands are present in frogs uh, toads femoral glands are found in reptiles 
Urobygial glands are found in birds that produces oily secretion by which they, the birds always remain waterproof. The sebaceous glands are the oily glands found in mammals. Sweat glands or sudoriferous glands are the glands found in mammals. Sand glands are the specialized glands which produces pheromones or opposite sex attracting, uh, attracting chemicals. In the same manner, mebomian glands are present in mammals, memory glands are present in the mammals, perineal glands are also there and photophores, they also attract opposite sex. Now we'll see the epidermal scales. Epidermal scales are found only in reptiles. Don't confuse it with the scales of the fishes. The scales of the fish are mesodermal in nature. They are derived from dermis. But here in reptiles, the scales are derived from epidermis only. So these scales are found in two distinct patterns. The scales may be overlapping in lizards and snakes. So they form a covering like structure and they help in the locomotion of the snakes. The scales may be edge to edge united and form a case like structure in turtles and crocodiles. Have you have seen, you must have seen in turtles that a uh, case like structure are formed by the fusion of the over edge to edge uh, union fusion of the scales and they form a plastron and carapace, a box like a structure. Now we'll move and come to the digital tips. Distal ends of the reptile, birds and mammals, they have digital tips. The digital tips are basically of three types. First is in the form of claws found in the cat family. Tiger, lion, leopard, cheetah, all of them have claws and claws perform many functions. The nails are present in primates, monkeys, orangutan, gibbon, gorilla, they all are having nails in them. The hooves are found in ungulates. All the ungulates, they have got a hoof-like structure by which they can run very fast without minimum friction, with the minimum friction. Now we'll move to the next slide and we'll study the horns. Horns are also epidermal structures. The rhinoceros or keratin fiber horns are found in Indian and African rhinos. You may be knowing that African rhinos are two horn, Indian rhinos are single horn, but the uh, their their horns are derived from the fusion of the hair-like structure, which is made up of keratin protein. The prongs horns are found in Russian antelopes. Antlers are found in deer families. Giraffes contains giraffe horns, which are solid in nature. And the other hollow horns are found in cow, buffalo, sheep, and goats. Now we'll see the other, another epidermal structure derivatives that is horny teeth. The horny teeth are also epidermal in origin. They are found in frogs, tadpoles, lamprey, turtles, egg-laying mammals. They all contain the same. Now we'll see the beaks, feathers and hairs. Feather, beaks, hairs, all are epidermal derivatives. Beaks of the bird, turtles, tortoises and ducks, they are keratinized and they are epidermal in nature. Feathers are light, strong, elastic, waterproof and they also maintain the body temperature that is why they are thermoregulator and feathers is the characteristic feature of the bird. There may be different kinds of feather in the birds. There may be contour feather, pillow plumes, 
quill or flight feathers down feathers may be there so different kinds of feathers are found in the birds and they perform many functions it is the characteristic feature of the bird hairs are hair is found in mammals only hair pro is protective they are thermoregulatory and characteristic feature of the mammal now we'll see some dermal derivatives the dermal derivatives are the are the derivatives derived from mesoderm so they are mesodermal in origin we'll see the first case is scales in fish all different kinds of fishes they have different kinds of scales cosmoid scales may be there placoid scales may be there genoid scales may be there cycloid scales may be there thinoid scales may be there so the fish scales are of different kinds extinct lung fishes contains cosmoid scale but genoid scales are similar to cosmoid and found in some living species placoid scales are spiny tooth like projections seen only in cartilaginous fishes genoid scales sometimes considered a modification of the placoid type are mainly bony but are covered with enamel like substance called genonin now we'll see the fin rays as you know the fins consist of fin rays fin rays fins they are the characteristic feature of pisces class pisces so the fin rays are also formed of mesoderm they are dermal derivatives scales in amphibians primitive amphibians may contain scales cilicians is an example of the primitive amphibians they contain scales and they are dermal in derivatives bony scutes of turtle and tortoises they are also bony in nature and they are therefore they are dermal in derivatives scales scutes of crocodiles and the dermal scales of mammalian armadillo are derived from dermis only so now we have seen the basic structure in all the classes of vertebrates now we'll see the functions of integument there are many functions of integument that is why they are called as jack of all trades the first function is protection the second is regulation of the temperature third one is to determine the shape rigidity fourth is the storage of food fifth is the secretion sixth is the excretion seventh is the respiration eighth is the sensation Ninth is the locomotion, and tenth is the skeleton. So we'll see one by one in brief. Protection: the main function of the skin is protection. So, from uh, the skin protects from outer environment and maintain the internal limb of the animal. It also helps in regulation of the temperature. We are having sweat glands, so uh, excess of the body temperature is. Uh, Uh, maintained through skin only uh, through evaporation of the sweat third is the shape um, skin provides a definite shape to the body storage of the food as you may be knowing that you know subcutaneous layer contains fat cells these cells uh, store large quantity of fats uh, and the fats can produce huge quantity of energy so storage of food is also a function of many uh hibernation hibernating and estivating animals skin also perform secretions mucus poison and many types of secretions are produced by skin only excretion excretion sweat is the excretion a uh, one type of excretion the salts urea many things are excreted out and the temperature is also regulated in this way 
Respiration is also performed uh, in many aquatic animals. For example, frog, uh, major uh, respiration takes place through skin only when they undergo hibernation or estivation. So the skin is very helpful in respiration. Sensation, we all see, I have seen that, you know, our skin is receptive to the cold, hotness, pain. So sensation is there in the skin. So it's a receptor. Nine, locomotion. In many many fishes, uh, snakes, uh, the skin helps them to move on the surface. And the tenth is the skeleton. Many uh, uh, skin forms, uh, dermal origin, uh, plates may be there, uh, scutes may be there, uh, mesodermal scales in this uh, fishes, they are all part of the skeleton only. And in this way, the important uh, function of skin is the skeleton also. So in this way, we have seen the uh, integument or skin in different classes of the uh, vertebrates. We have seen their derivatives. We have seen the integument. So I hope you must have enjoyed this uh, lecture uh, and the beautiful photographs and diagrams. Uh, thank you very much.